is round two of the real estate video we tried to shoot last week. <laughs> real estate is a really popular niche and can be a very lucrative niche for you, especially when you're starting out. I actually have a lot of friends that are doing this as their full-time gig and making a solid living off of it. Becky was actually one of those people. I, for eight years, had my own company, and I would say about 60 to 70% of my income was yes. based off of interior photography. So shooting for real estate agents, interior designers, counter hop companies. We wanted to give you guys a well-rounded breakdown on how to shoot this type of content, what your clients are looking for, what gear you need. If you head on over to Becky's channel after this, you can watch her video on how to make money in real estate video and photography. But for now, let's show you guys how to shoot this stuff. Let's do it. The first thing you need to keep in mind when you're shooting interior photography or video is lighting. What does the light in the room look like? And generally speaking, if the day is overcast, the light inside is probably gonna be better. If it's sunny, sometimes you're gonna get harsh light inside the window. So you just wanna be careful depending on what way the home is facing, or you can choose a time of day that this would work if there aren't many overcast days coming up near your shoot day. Generally, in terms of exteriors, I like to say if the sky is blue, even with some nice Simpsons-like clouds, that generally makes for a really good lead shot for the exterior of the home. So if you're doing drone videography or you're even shooting a photo, that is a really good sky. You can always comp in the sky if you have to, but yeah. it's way easier to get it done in camera than have to do it in post later. In terms of scheduling, you may have to pick your main shoot day and then an alternate or a rain date just in case the lighting isn't exactly what you want. There are a number of different ways you can actually shoot and light the interior of the home that you're shooting. So generally I like to use natural light and I'll shoot three exposures, one for the shadows, one for the highlights, and one for the midtones, and blend them in post later. So the tripod is going to be key to make sure that your shots are exactly the same each time. So when you go back and post and you wanna blend them later, you don't have any movement between the shots. So you can also use flash or constant lights. It's a little bit more set up. I like to shoot the room so that it looks natural to the way my eye sees it in person. The key to shooting interior photography is a wide angle lens. You're gonna to wanna to get back and shoot as much of that room as possible. So on a full frame body, you're gonna be looking at a 16 millimeter lens. On a crop body, something around a 10 millimeter lens. Get back and shoot as much as you can, and then you're gonna to wanna to get some detail shots as well. So depending on the client, if you're shooting for somebody like an interior designer, they're gonna have little vignettes and little pockets of tastiness set up for you to shoot. So something like a 50 works really well. And also shooting raw is key, because if you have a lot of dynamic range, sun coming in through the window, you have lights on, lamps on, you're gonna to wanna to pull them down in post. You're just gonna to want to have all of that information available to manipulate the image and make sure that it really looks similar to how you're seeing the room with your own eye and it's natural light and it's natural setting. In terms of video, all you're gonna need now is a gimbal and you can actually use those same lenses that Becky was talking about. The best part about a gimbal is that you're really just walking through the space and creating these really, really fluid shots just to reveal everything in its 360 view. That's why video can be also so key and that's why a lot of realtors are actually looking for videos in addition to their photos because it really gives you a comprehensive view of the space itself. I wanna see what the layout of that house is and yeah. how the house flows and so sometimes you can't capture that with just photography. So as Lizzie said, taking the gimbal, walking through the home and almost doing like a home tour walkthrough, it's really helpful for the buyer. Now moving on to exteriors. So this is when you're gonna need a drone, but you don't necessarily need something crazy like a Mavic Pro or a Phantom or anything like that. You can just go with a Mavic Air if you want. That's what I have. What you really wanna keep in mind is whether that location features a really interesting view or whether there is a huge property that you need to feature through that aerial shot. The lead shot is key. That's the <laughs> shot of the front of the house. That's what everyone wants to see. What does your house look like from the curb? So you can shoot it on the ground with your DSLR or you can shoot it with the drone up high to get the whole property or the view in the picture with the actual front of the home. And oftentimes if the home is like a larger home, you're actually gonna get a really nice elevation in the back of the house as well. So sometimes it's nice to show off the back, the patio, the landscaping, all of those things. So just keep that in mind. And don't forget if you are shooting real estate with drones, make sure to check with your local area to see if you need any special permits or things like that. I know where I shot, we did need to have special permits because we we're close to a number of airports. Some of the things you're gonna be looking for in post-production is keystoning and making sure that all of those lines line up perfectly. So pay attention. For one thing, when you're taking the photo, turn the grid lines on in your camera 
and also your little leveler. Little leveler. Little leveler. leveler. And just make sure that everything is straight and narrow and level, and that's gonna save you a lot of time in post. There is gonna be some requirement in Lightroom or in Photoshop to fix the perspective a little bit. The closer you can get it in camera, the better. Yeah. That is the biggest telltale sign between a professional and an amateur interior photographer is the keystoning. So yeah. if you do wanna market yourself to higher end real estate agents, make sure that your shots look square and the lines are straight and there's no weird keystoning. Keystoning equals bad. bad. In the cards, somewhere up here, is Becky's video about interior design photography and she goes through in much more detail about how in Lightroom you can actually make those adjustments to make sure that all of your lines are straight. So in terms of color correction, I try to make the shot look exactly how it looks to my eye. Yeah. So I don't do any stylizing or specialized color. Usually, you know, for my Instagram, I like to add some blue in the shadows. Yeah. I don't do that for my real estate clients because they want to see a realistic looking photo. Make sure that your white balance is correctly set and that you don't have any weird lights on in your room and mixing up those color temperatures. A little tip I like to use, sometimes when the sun is coming in, there's a bit of a blue glare on the floor. This is a trick that I didn't talk about in my oh, last video. Yeah. Hidden tips, guys. <laughs> yes. If you go to the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders and you just drop the saturation of your blue slider down, it kind of gets rid of that weird blue glow on the floor. So now that you guys have the tools of the trade and we gave you some of our key tips on how to shoot real estate photography and videography, you can head over to Becky's channel to find out how to actually make money in this niche. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like down below. Subscribe to my channel and Becky and Becky and Chris's. We actually never mentioned Chris. She's oh. one half of the channel, Becky and Chris. That's correct. My husband is, works. And hit the notification bell to get notified when we post new videos every week. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Now we're gonna yeah. shoot the other video. I'm yeah. soaked, sweating right now because I have problems. Blah, 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 blah,